Today I will take a look at this giant and very heavy typewriter. It was produced in 1986 in East Germany. This is digital controlled typewriter with motors and electronics inside. It has also a specific style how it prints individual letters. This part will show basic overview of the machine. Later I would like to take a look on the digital board with a scope or try to repair the keyboard and if not successful I could try to emulate the keyboard with a micro and print what I want. As you can see uh, it also has big sliding carriage with printer head and mechanics in it. The individual letters are printed with this ring and solenoid hammer. The letters are not ordered alphabetically but in strange patterns. I assume its position is given by a statistic analysis that the most used letters uh, in your language are nearby. The only connector on the device is uh, the power cord with a power switch next to it. Uh, there's uh, nothing on the back, uh, just a nameplate. So as I said, uh, this was produced in East Germany with parts from Soviet bloc. Uh, this piece could be a newer one, I don't know. Uh, we will see that on manufacturing dates of the chips. So the printing head finds its uh, end position when I turn on the typewriter. Also, uh, every time I close the top power, the rotating head is doing uh, some uh, alignment. As you can see, uh, the keyboard is unusual. I still don't know how to properly control this device. There are weird symbols and no instruction manual. Some keys are completely dead, some are half dead. Uh, the contacts under the buttons are too old and you have to press the buttons hard uh, and also a few times more. First time I tested this machine it didn't allow me to print anything. Then uh, the next day my colleague asked me if I had a paper in it. And of course uh, this clever typewriter has uh, some optical sensors. So let's start again with a clean paper. I still don't uh, figure it out uh, how to properly load the paper. There's uh, some lever which uh, could help but sometimes uh, the button I'm smashing uh, moved the drum a little bit uh, but I have no luck this time. I'm just pressing random keys and hoping that the paper will go in. How stupid I was. Now I'm writing uh, but on the drum not on the paper. When I press that uh, grey play button, uh, the display goes off and the typing mode is on. I have no idea what uh, 07 code means. Then 02. I give up and I'm feeding the paper manually. And let's take a look uh, what's on the paper. Okay, so I'm not entirely sure what those letters are. I'm trying to press uh, letter Q, Q, W, E, is not working, R, no numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So maybe I try to reset uh, that letter ring again and it could uh, maybe help to print the right letters. Now a small overview of uh, what can be printed with this uh, letter ring. That vertical pipe symbol will be probably for correcting uh, wrong type letters with that white tape. Also, I don't know what this hinged piece of metal is for. You can slide it and that's all. Okay, so I was thinking that uh, it could somehow self-align, but uh, no, there's a little notch uh, in here and I have to put this letter circle exactly with that hole to that notch. So it could Spacebar. Okay, no hello world, no H, no E, no L, W, O, R. Perfect! 
let's try the numbers. One, two, three. Oh, this is a Czech keyboard, so I have to press some shift. One, two, three, four, five, five. <laughs> it has five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. This typewriter has also backspace key. Unfortunately, the wrong type letter cannot disappear from a screen. It has to be corrected manually on the paper. So on this yellow drums, uh, there has to be some white uh, overprint tape. And when you press backspace, uh, then the solenoid hammer prints uh, over this white tape and moves a few times to the left. And it will actually overprint uh, the wrong type letter Let's move to the printing head. It's really fun because I could uh, rewind this tape and see uh, what uh, was written on this typewriter many, many years ago, 20 years ago. Okay, I see two stepper motors. The first is rotating that uh, lettering, and the second one is here. And it's probably moving uh, the drum cut the cartridge. So it works like that. Uh, you pull this, and it's really clever design. See, the disc is free. Put it back, and now it wasn't correct. Okay, now it's correct. So there's a small solenoid and a hammer, metal hammer, which uh, prints the letter. So this printing head is controlled via this uh, flat flex cable. We can see some thicker and thinner traces. And under the printing head, uh, there's also moving a small PCB uh, with uh, through hole parts. You can probably see some resistors. There's some power resistor in the middle. And this is where the flat flex cable is connected. So it seems like this solenoid is moving uh, the printing tape up. And there's uh, the second one, stepper motor. Uh, it's uh, making just uh, that correction when you type a wrong letter. So in one revolution it uh, pulls uh, this bar up and also it uh, rotates the tape, the masking tape a little bit. So it's again elegant and clever solution. I'm not exactly sure how to take this apart, so I will take away these two screws and I will see. This is a display board and this one 
This one has uh, that uh, annoying buzzer. So let's make a little electric overview here. Uh, there is uh, the power cord connected. The output from the switch uh, goes by this yellow cable to the main power supply that is located in this area between the printing drum and the main logic board. Then uh, the power supply is connected to the logic and power board in this and this place. Notice uh, the common choke filter in the digital part. And now let's move to the chips. This one is Z80 East Block clone. Then by the parallel bus is connected to the four chips, which are input-output buffers. Uh, each of them has three 8-bit configurable I/O ports. Here are EEPROMs. Uh, this could be Statigram. Also for expansions, there's a connector with the CPU bus. And to the main board is connected uh, the keyboard, then this would be a display. Those black cables are wired to various sensors and switches. Let's look at them. One of the cables goes to the top cover switch. Other cables goes back here. This is some sort of optical sensor to sense inserted paper. And the last wire goes also to some switch. Uh, not sure where it is located right now, but probably it's the printing head stop switch. From the digital board, there's a flat cable connected to the driver board. This board controls few stepper motors. Here is one of which rotates the printing drum. It's quite big. Then there's a second one, which I guess is moving the printing head. Then another drivers and control signals are on this flat cable, which is uh, by that flat flex cable connected to the moving printing head. There are two stepper motors, one here. The second one rotates the lettering. Then the solenoid is printing the letters. And there's an actuator for lifting the black printing tape. In the next part, I'll take a look at the CPU, how fast it's running, how the keyboard is multiplexed. Unfortunately, I cannot read out the data from EEPROM because uh, they are not socketed. Also, I have to check the keyboard if it's possible to repair the keys. And also, I will investigate how that interesting matrix LEDs are driven. If you take a look really close, you see some driver chip. Maybe decoder embedded in the displays. And that's all for today. Please thumb up uh, or comment this video if you would like to see part two. And subscribing always helps. Thank you.